Hey, this episode we're getting into 90 days of ownership on our fifth generation 2022 TRD off-road premium 4Runner. So let's get into it. And we have a $100 gas card and a Toyota cargo net we're giving away when we hit 1,000 subscribers. So I hope you win. happy to have you here I'm Terry and we've owned our forerunner now 90 days or so and I wanted to give everyone an update and some feedback on buying a 2022 TRD off-road premium forerunner fifth generation so to start we're huge advocates of buying a fifth generation forerunner because they're built in a Lexus plant alongside Lexus products and they're technically a Lexus even though it says Toyota on the vehicle and whether you get the base SR5 or go all the way up to the TRD Pro, you are getting a high quality vehicle, arguably the highest quality vehicle made at that price point. Now, the only gray area is should you buy a TRD Pro or get a GX460 Lexus? We're getting one. Teresa's is getting a GX460. I happen to think that a GX460 for a bit more money is a better deal than a TRD Pro, period. And I, and I absolutely feel that a TRD Off-Road Premium is the way to go. It gives you a bit more leeway to modify and not pay for TRD Pro pieces that you can put on yourself, right? So this one obviously doesn't have the Fox shocks, but it's got a beautiful ride to it. I mean, if we drive this truck half an hour to 45 minutes with the windows up, we get sleepy. That's how soft the ride is on Michigan roads that aren't known for being paved very well. Obviously you want Fox shock. That's a premium you can pay or you can get a TRD off-road premium and get aftermarket shocks for less money that arguably once again are just as good or offer different value points on your budget scale. For us, our first comment is stop at the TRD Off-Road Premium for the fifth generation 4Runner. If you are seriously looking at a TRD Pro, awesome, 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 but also look at the GX460 and what that offers. Uh, the one we've got coming in has got a built-in trailer brake controller. It won't be, but it could be modded to be just as capable, if not more capable, than a TRD Pro. So what do we like about the uh, 4Runner we've got, the 2022 Off-Road Premium, after just over 90 days of ownership? The build quality, the paint quality, the interior fit and finish are beyond excellent zero squeaks and rattles riding driving this once or twice and i heard a buzzer rattle it was the phone vibrating <laughs> it wasn't the truck you know that's how good these things are put together next is the fact that i know there'll be no coming recalls for this truck i mean there could be for anything right but i'm not gonna have to worry about missing work or an undependable vehicle and that's important to me the next thing i sincerely like about this truck is the powertrain and five-speed automatic transmission i think they're excellent now when I think about five-speed transmission versus a six, eight, or 10-speed transmission, when you're talking off-road, you've got five gears versus eight or 10 gears. And I'd rather have five gears because there's fewer points of failure when you're off-roading. So I think 10-speed automatics need to prove themselves a bit more in the off-roading world. You can drive anything off-road. I see Subaru pushing CVTs for off-road use. I say that's a huge mistake, don't fall for it. But back to the 4Runner, the way things are, literally all vehicles are going for sticker price. If the dealer is fair about it, a lot of markets are going over sticker. I view the GX460 and the fifth generation 4Runners to be the only vehicles worth paying sticker price for because they hold their value and they have great resale value, et cetera, et cetera. You can look all this stuff up on consumer reports. Again, I wanna go back to the GX460. Dealers are marking up the TRD Pro, if they're gonna mark it up, just buy a GX460 and be even happier with an even nicer interior, same chassis, technically the same truck. Think about that proposition, right? Versus being overcharged for a TRD Pro. Another item like a lot about the truck are the uh, tire and wheel package straight from the factory. It's more of a highway tire and it's a Here are the wheels that came with from the factory. These are Dunlop Grand Trek tires. I think this rim design this TRD rim design with the circle around the TRD might be specific to the off-road premium. These tires are more than fine for me. Uh, when they go bad, I can upgrade them, but I'm gonna run them down. I'm gonna rotate them when they need to be rotated and 
you know, for the kind of driving I'm doing right now, they're more than sufficient tire and it's a quieter tire. So for how we're using the truck right now, perfect. And I'm not worried about off-road gravel, snow scenarios with this truck. By sheer coincidence. Something else great about the 4Runner is the amount of pressure applied against the windshield for the windshield wiper blades. This was engineered by Toyota for off-roading use. When you get mud on your windshield, they want that windshield to come clean. Got excellent wipers when you're off-roading or in clement weather. This truck shines. I'm going to back up here on this truck. This truck shines in bad weather. Snow, rain, mud. I wouldn't want to be in any other vehicle except maybe a GX460. This vehicle if you got to go through bad weather and drive, hey man, it just shines in bad weather. As good as this truck is right now, if the weather went south, this truck really shines. And here you can just see these are just great lines. Here are the uh, door edge guards I put on in a different video. Great move. I didn't want to get into a position where I did this two years from now and lunar rock storage guards were no longer available type of thing so here pretty straightforward stuff we've been running 89 octane even with the high prices uh, you have to make sure you follow these rules up to e15 gasoline only e20 to e85 is a no-no again back to the canvas back side of things a great product and if you uh order canvas back for your truck uh, the discount code for 10% off is ODTRP10, and you'll get 10% off that order. I didn't get 10% off, but you'll, you'll get 10% off. So uh, that's just a quick look here. And here you can see with the lift gate up here and some more of the canvas back here, right? Just a great truck, great design. This can be a challenge to pull close for some people. I just grab right here. And, and pull down like that and there you go and i hope you're as fortunate as we were to get a fifth generation forerunner before it's too late i'm a little bit worried after the tundra debacle what the sixth generation forerunner is really going to turn out to be in terms of quality its first couple years and i know progress keeps on moving but i also think there's a great business case for keeping this formula at toyota for people that use this for overlanding, off-roading, and trailer towing. I don't think I'd want to go overlanding in, a, in an electric hybrid vehicle. That's just me. Uh, I want to stick with trusted technology. So uh, that's just a quick walk around of the truck. And you can see the great lines. The mirrors aren't too big. They aren't too small. Everything flows. It's a good looking truck. And I'll back it up here to the front. And there you go. Forerunners, fifth generation forerunners have legendary off-road credentials. That's another thing I like about the truck is the off-road capability and the overall capability of the truck. Now for me, uh, this fifth generation forerunner over something like a Ford Explorer or a Chevrolet Tahoe, past the better quality, past better resale value points. I think this is the right size truck. It's not too big and it's not too small. You can see our canvas back here. We just took the truck camping with a trailer, just vacuumed up the canvas back. We had put firewood back here. You can't even tell anything was back here. And that includes our beloved Piper. So what don't I like about the truck? I understand having a 10 speed or eight speed over a five speed transmission for towing has its advantages for fuel economy. We had a 3,460 pound trailer. We had Teresa, I, and Piper and about three to 400 pounds of extra stuff that we brought with us on a camping trip this past weekend. I don't think forerunners like to tow. That's that's my, my feeling. Uh, you can blame the five-speed transmission. It's not much of a tow vehicle. We used a Bluetooth trailer brake controller off the seven pin connector back here. I don't think it's a great towing vehicle, but that's okay. I'm not towing with it all the time. I knew what I was walking into. That's really it. That's my only beef. I love the five speed transmission. I do not think it's an inefficient design as some other channels are claiming. I think that the design is very efficient. Here's a bit more of the interior with the canvas back. I've got one seat down kind of as a pass through for Piper. You can just see how well this is built. Really nice window defrosters right here. Just a, just a beautiful truck on the interior. 
Uh, I've heard people complain about the window controls being up high on the door. If you think about it, where else would you want them? It's nice. You got your arm like this. For me, I love it. And your window controls are right here. It's nice, you know, especially when you're off-road with a vehicle like this or in a campground, for example. I know people are just used to reaching down to roll up a window, but maybe when you're rock crawling or driving off-road, you don't want to be looking down for your window switch. You want your window switches up here more intuitively for those types of scenarios. So uh, I hope Toyota, with the sixth generation 4Runner, keeps that kind of design DNA going forward. Keeps the cues that made this such a fantastic truck. It will be a fantastic truck for years, even after they quit making them. Here's a great view of the 4 liter V6. And here's the uh, TRD oil cap I put on it. Big deal there. But the bigger point is, you look down there, you don't see a lot of plastic on the motor. You see aluminum and metal parts almost everywhere on the motor and when people that know trucks look at that they go wow right and that's probably the reason why you can see some of it there right about there it's probably the reason why people that know trucks look at this motor and go wow i will put the uh trd cold air intake cleaner on it for more torque for trailer towing and the trd Pearl cap back exhaust for more torque for towing. If I pick up 10 to 15 pounds of torque by doing all those things, it'll improve a bit marginally the towing experience. Uh, I, I'm not towing with this all the time, but when I do, it's a different beast, different animal under towing circumstances. It can still tow though. Uh, the original rumors were 2023. Now 2024 or coming out is a 2023. 24 and 2023 none of these channels know the truth only toyota knows the truth about that so i want everyone to be careful with fanboys i'm not a fanboy quality and durability mean a lot to me i would have gladly bought a ford explorer if it was designed like this and built like this couldn't in clear conscience do that i would have bought a tahoe under the same pretenses but in clear conscience i couldn't do that i don't think neither of those trucks are as rugged or durable as this truck in the long term. And with what they're charging for vehicles nowadays, you know, uh, $51,000 is a lot of money to me. I don't care what anyone thinks, you know. It better last eight to 10 years and this will do it. So I have no questions that if I just follow the maintenance, this truck will probably look like this in eight years. No questions. Throw a wax on it occasionally, change the oil, do the uh, timing belt when it says to do the timing belt. I'm not worried about a thing with this truck. What they're charging for trucks and you hear about all these recalls for bad electronics, bad transmissions, mistakes the factory made, blame the supplier. All the blame goes back to the OEMs. If they cannot make a high quality vehicle, what they're charging now for these things, it's on them. And that includes Toyota and Honda when they make mistakes. Toyota dropping a Lexus motor in the new Tundra and we're hearing about electronics issues, turbo wastegate issues, other problems with the truck. It's a scary world, but when they expect people to pony up 50, 60, 70, $80,000 for a truck, trucks used to be affordable. People are leasing them because they can't afford them. These trucks don't last three to four years without major problems. I didn't want that, so I didn't get that getting this truck. I can carry this into retirement, literally. It's worth every penny at sticker price. I historically have never bought vehicles at sticker price. I'm a very good negotiator in car dealerships, but with the way things are, again, fifth generation 4Runners, if you gotta pay sticker, this is the one to get. You don't wanna give them up. I've, I gave up three 4Runners before this one. I wish I hadn't. That won't happen with this one. This one is definitely superior to our 2019 TRD Pro and Voodoo Blue. That truck looked great, but that big bar thing on, on the top was a love or hate proposition. I do think it impacted fuel economy a bit. If I can talk about fuel economy, yeah, it's not the greatest on a 4Runner. That depends on whose perspective you're taking that in. If you buy a vehicle only for fuel economy reasons, you're making a mistake. You get it all back on the 4Runner in resale value, fewer trips for problems and quality. What you're not spending on, what you're spending on fuel, you're not spending on repair bills with a 4Runner. There's a great aftermarket for this truck with all sorts of cool things you can do to it, whether you want to put a power lift gate on it or do other things to the truck. And most of the stuff you can do at home in your garage. So again, you know, I, I, I'm still pushing people to go out and get a fifth generation 4Runner. Uh, we just don't know enough about the sixth generation 4Runner. The rumors I've heard are that it will be made in Texas or Mexico and have a four cylinder. 
I just don't want a four cylinder in a mid-sized truck. I, I don't. I wish, you know, they had offered the 4.6 liter V8 in this. It'll fit in this, just for the trailer towing perspective. But that all said and done, this is an excellent truck. I've had zero problems with it since owning it. I kind of expected that. It hasn't let me down. People with newer design trucks all come to look at this truck. We took it camping, all the campers came by to look at it. They love the color, they love the truck. And you can say Toyota hasn't changed the design since 2008, 2009, whatever it is. You know what, it's a timeless design. It's a good looking truck, they got it right. It doesn't matter. Some other differences between the 2019 TRD Pro and this one is of course the upgraded instrument panel, which you guys know about. Toyota Safety Sense reduced my insurance cost over two thirds for this truck. I was paying a lot to insure the TRD Pro that I'm not paying on this one. That's something else to think about. LED lights everywhere. My TRD Pro in 2019, I don't believe had LED fog lights. This one does. This is the consummate best version of the 4Runner that you can get right now, fifth generation 4Runner. You can definitely deal with Fox Toyota like I did and Craig Ever. They have a couple coming in, a couple in stock. It's okay to buy a vehicle out of state. If you tell Craig, uh, Terry, and on down the road productions, said call, they'll take care of you like he took care of me. It's a good truck. It's worth every penny. I don't feel like I got ripped off. I don't feel like it's a bad vehicle. When I show people the motor on this vehicle, they're super impressed. I was looking at a buddy's new Silverado that he uses for his own business. The hood latch is cheap on it. You can't open the hood. I mean, how could GM do that? You know, on a Silverado, design a crappy hood latch like that. It's all done to save money. Honestly, folks, it's leasing that's causing this problem. The auto companies figured out that they can lease vehicles, which means they can charge more for their vehicles, lease them, and report higher profits. Again, I'll tell you all, if you can't afford to buy a vehicle, new or used, don't buy it, wait till you can, or look for a diamond in the rough on the used car market, something. But if you're gonna step up and not lease and buy, this is probably, and the GX460 are probably the only vehicles worth buying and not leasing. I, I got sick of driving by Dodge Rams, GM trucks, Chevy trucks that were rusting that were only four or five years old. I'm talking bad rust. You just don't get that with this truck. It, it's made outstandingly well. So in summary, after 90 days of ownership, really no complaints. My only minor one, mid to minor one, is that I wish it towed better. You have to use cruise control when towing. So if the, and you can't go over 65 miles an hour. I found that the sweet spot for towing is around 60. You have to lock it in cruise control or you're gonna be playing with the gas pedal constantly on a highway, which gets old after a while. But it can, it can still tow. But when this motor towing a, a trailer loaded up, the truck loaded up, when it downshifts, it kind of screams. But that's okay, it's a good engine, good transmission. It's just the way that it is and I knew I was getting into that. So I give this vehicle on a scale of one to 10 after 90 days, a 10. It deserves it completely. It's beautiful. It looks good. It runs so quiet. I want to go back to our camping trip this weekend. I listened to some of the other tow vehicles from other manufacturers. People are sitting there with their windows rolled up and you can hear their motors clicking and, click, clicking and clacking because the accessories are cheap or whatever the problem is on these new trucks. This one here, you start it up, it doesn't click and, click and clack like that. No new vehicle should sound like that, like a gerbil motor because you're running the AC and the windows are up or towing a trailer. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for being here. Liking and sharing uh, is helping us out a lot. I say thank you. If you're here for the first time, very good to have you here. I'd like to remind everyone that uh, we're giving away the cargo net that came with this because I won't be using it. It's brand new in the package. It's a Toyota part number and a $100 gift card for gas or, or whatever you want to use that for when we hit a thousand subscribers. Thank you for being here. You guys, I hope you're all doing good. We'll see everybody next episode on down the road and go Forerunners. Salute.